So I'm so glad to have here today, David Muller. I begged him to come and sit down with me because I wanted to just grill him over the good and the bad and the ugly, literally the ugly of headshot shoots. Uh, and so David, I'm really glad to have you here today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. It's a, it's a true honor. So uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So um, we met a long time ago, I think when I was doing some MTV show when I was helping someone come do their headshots, which was wild. Um, it's been years now. I think it's probably been like eight or nine years since that. Um, yeah. But to kick us off and to get started, I thought we could start in a really fun way. Can you tell us like the hallmarks of a fabulous headshot shoot? Like when you know, like it's going to be great, like what, what happens? And we're going to just jump right in here. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's jump right. in. Yeah. yeah. Can you, t what, what are the hallmarks of a really, like when you know, like this actor is ready, you know, the pictures are going to turn out well, like you can feel the vibe. Can you share with us? Like what, what were those, those touchstones? Sure. Well, there's a couple, there's a couple things I think. Uh, and, and the thing that I've noticed and is that I, I feel like some of the best sessions that happen are the sessions where people come in and they're just willing to play around. They're just willing to be goofy, to try different things. To like, I, I have one guy and I posted this on my Instagram, you know, maybe a year or so ago. And he just was like, he was just having fun the entire time. He was like looking at his watch and like looking at the shot and like pulling out his phone and being goofy, you know, and it's like, you kind of, the, the old me would have been like, all right, let's, let's tone that down. This is not a headshot. You know, you're, you're being cornball, but but when you, when you look later through the session and you start seeing the shots, you're like, oh, that's such an interesting shot. That's so interesting. And you can kind of, you know, start pinning people for, I could see you in this type of role. I can see you in this type of role. And so I really find that the best sessions are people who are just, they don't have a set thing in mind of what they want to look like, how they want it to turn out, you know, that sort of controlling, like, I need it to look like this because this is what I have in my mind and my expectation. It's just, I'm, I'm an actor and I'm coming in and I'm going to play around because at the end of the day, that's the, you know, one of the base things of acting is it's play. You're, you're playing, you know, you're, you're acting like someone else. Uh, and so for me, that's the number one thing is just come in, let your expectations go and have fun. And, wait, and I need to, wait, can I push back so hard and you can clear me up? So yeah. every actor in the world is told, figure out what you're going to wear and know the looks that you need and you get this number of looks. And so you have to use that time for the maximum amount of time. How do you, how do you, how would you tell the actor who needs to please the agent or need that? Like, how do they navigate that piece of this? Well, and that's true. I'm not, so what I said before, isn't taking away from that. Preparation yeah. is, is huge and, and key. And I think wardrobe is an enormous part of a session. So knowing the types, having your wardrobe ready, having good wardrobe ready uh, is, is all absolutely key. Knowing what your agent wants because they're the one that's sending your picture out, you know, is, is all 100% something that needs to be done. But it's when you get there, letting go of the control and letting go of the, you know, I have this picture in, in my mind as I want to get this. I can, I can kind of give you a story. So, you know, I was an actor, uh, you know, many moons ago, I was, you know, pursuing acting. And uh, actually, when digital photography first started, there was people doing like, you know, tests, because they're like, we'll test you for free, we're just trying out our digital equipment. And I did a test with this photographer. And as we're shooting, you know, he's showing me some of the shots. And we got this one shot that I was just like, I was blown away. I just loved it. It was my smirk was perfect. I was just in the perfect position. And I was like, you know, of course, typical actor, I wasn't satisfied. I was like, let's do that again. Let's get some more of that. Let's do, let's do more of that. Cause I want to, you know, I got it, but let's get it again. And man, did we try for like a half hour to recreate that shot? Same lighting, same spot. Everything was the same and we couldn't get it. <laughs> at least, at least we couldn't get it to my satisfaction because in my mind it had to be the one that we got or better. And it just, you know, it's one of those things where you can have an expectation, but a certain party has to let the expectation go to some degree, uh, because if you're stuck on an expectation, then, you know, you're not going to be, you're not going to be satisfied, even if it's great, you know, right. great shot. Yeah. I also hear in that, like a little bit of like, do your homework and then kind of forget about it because then whatever's present on that day is going to be what's fun or what's going to be what's possible then like kind of right. And I, 
And I feel like that's what, you know, a lot of acting teachers teach is, yeah, do that homework. But when you get on there, be in the moment, you know, and it's, it's the same thing for headshots. You know, people come into headshots with, with generally a very different idea than they go on to set with, you know, they, I, I hear almost every day, you know, I'm not, I'm not good in front of a still camera. It's like, but if I have like words or something and I'm in front of a moving camera and in my mind, I'm going, the only difference is the rate at the, which the shutter is moving. That's the only real difference, but in people's minds, you know, it's moving slow. So I have to do something for each frame instead of I'm embodying the character and you're going to capture it as I, as I embody that character. Well, that is such a, I mean, even if I think everybody got those money's worth for listening just now from what you just said, because that is such a, from the free podcast, right? From the, the, there's, there's value in what you just said of we can put this false belief in front of ourselves at the camera. And I think that is again, stuck on, like you said, the expectation, this is a frozen moment in time. So I'm preparing for my frozen moment in time. But I think what I'm hearing you say also is it's the photographer's job to capture the moment. It's your job to be in it. It's almost like that's where you step in and do your work around this. Yeah, or at least, you know, see where the moment could use a little bit of tweaking or a little bit of work because I have a perspective that they don't have, you know. Um, one of my favorite clients to shoot is actually an acting teacher. Her name is Bev Leach. I don't know if you know Bev. Uh, and she just always, you know, she'll, she'll stop and she'll turn away and she'll look away and she'll get her thoughts and then she'll turn to the camera with her thoughts. And it's just always brilliant. Like it's always... I'm always getting something really interesting from her because she doesn't she doesn't care that I'm standing there waiting. You know what I mean? It's like this is her moment. This is her time. She knows what she wants to get. And so many people are kind of looking to the photographer to like guide me, direct me, you know, but it's like if you go on set and you have dialogue, you're not waiting for the director to always give you your choices. You've come up with that ahead of time, you know how to embody the character. And then if they give you a note, of course, you you apply it. And I think the same thing should be true for headshots, you know, like, you know, come in with embodying the character, embodying the wardrobe and, you know, to be in the movement, in the moment and move and, and be free and, and let the photographer capture it. Now, not every headshot photographer will work that way, you know, so it, it depends, you know, but if you're shooting sure. with me, I want people to, you know, be free to be themselves and, or be free to move. And, you know, I'm not like, okay, do this, 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 a little more, a little more, you know, and then, okay, now you look good. Now I'll take the picture. I, I like to kind of shoot in the moment and uh, allow the moment to happen. Got it. That's great. And what, what, you know, this is a surprise to me in this conversation, this is sounding much more like an acting conversation than it's a headshot conversation. I think that should be pretty exciting to any actors listening because, hey, acting, that's what we know how to do. This other stuff, like taking pictures, worrying about taking pictures, no. But what you're saying is this is much more when shooting with you specifically and some other photographer, sure, is akin to acting. So I want to get back to some of the hallmarks. I want to make sure I don't, I don't t walk away with our good conversation there, which was one of them is like you said, having your homework, but being free to be in the moment. Is there anything else you said, like knowing your wardrobe, but not being stuck? Is there anything around wardrobe that we should talk about in terms of being stuck? Because I see actors really wreck themselves over wardrobe. And sometimes the way that I'll talk to them about preparing is have your choices and be open to the photographer being a voice when you get to the shoot. Is that the way you would like people to show up or what do you think is most helpful for you? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, you know, bring the things that you have in your mind that you've sort of pinned that, you know, you feel like work, but always have backup options. Could be any reason. It could be, you know, this pastel is going to reflect. It's going to just look white on camera. You know, it could, it could be anything or it could be playing, you know, take uh, distracting attention. It's playing with the eyes in a funny way. Um, or it just sometimes doesn't read in the way that you thought it was going to, you know, and it's, it's like you wanted a period piece, but this is just looking like girl next door, you know, and it's yeah. just reading the way you thought. So it's always good to have, you know, secondary options and, and allow the photographer to give his feet, his or her feedback as to this isn't going to play the way that you think. Yeah. yeah. But, but wardrobe's such a, it's such a huge, in my opinion, part. And, you know, I don't want to get into the mistakes people make. Why not? Give us a couple of mistakes. We're available. We're available. This doesn't they have to be are showing up with wardrobe that doesn't excite you to wear. Like if you, mm. if you, I, I think people should go get new wardrobe that you don't necessarily own that still has the tags on it. You know, don't tell Bloomingdale's, <laughs> but 
bring that to the shoot because that's going to invigorate you to feel good in something. If you're bringing, you know, I have people show up with like, you know, literally they'll come in with three things and it's like a wrinkly shirt that, you know, looks like they just picked it up off their floor. And it's like, that's not going to excite you. It's not going to energize you as an actor to wear that. And and it's not gonna it's not gonna look great on camera. And let's face it, when you book a job, there are stylists that are getting expensive clothes for you to wear because right. it looks good. It right. Reason. What you just said, if I can just interrupt you for one second, is it's so I never thought of this before, but like we all feel differently when we're wearing new clothes. There's something about just having the new clothes, even yeah. if you know, like I kind of have one of these in my closet already, but having the new version of it is gonna make you just feel a little bit new on that day. And that's such a great energy to, a way to tap into that energy, I think. Sure, in the same way that a costume, you know, or a mask can make you feel differently, this, yeah. this thing is set of, of wardrobe, you know, and uh, a lot of good actors, you know, known actors will work with wardrobe people. And, you know, my favorite movie, uh, The Big Lebowski, uh, Jeff Bridges, you know, brought the stylist to his house in his closet, showed him all the dude stuff that he had, <laughs> he felt good in, and he's wearing that on set because that's, you know, he feels right. like himself in that. And I think that applies across the board. Yeah, I love that. So wait, another question for you. So is there ever, uh, are there any kind of trends that you see that come up in headshots that either ones that are sticking or that like you're suddenly having to deal with or like where do you, another way to ask this question, but like where do you kind of keep yourself on top of trends or do you not believe in that at all? Like, does this make sense? Well, I'm sort of, I mean, I'm forced to some degree to follow the trends because that's what people will come in asking for, you know, and some of the trends right now, a lot of full body shots, you know, a lot of agents are requesting that and, and not because they're used a lot, but because they're used occasionally, they want to have one on hand for their clients and like have a full body shot. Um, a lot of, you know, headshots are kind of always evolving to some degree. I remember when I when I was a young actor and this is, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, you know, a headshot was this sort of like, I'm in the camera, I'm, you know, everything's blown out. I'm wearing a black turtleneck and I'm just looking like my best uh, glamorous self. <laughs> and that, you know, in the digital era came along and now it's like, well, we want to see you as this character and as this character. So wardrobe got more specific. They need the pump, the thumbnail to pop in some, in some way, um, you know, clothes got more like, you know, Never in the past would someone wear a graphic t-shirt in a headshot. And now right. agents specifically request wear a graphic t-shirt. You know, we want to pitch you as the stoner. We want to pitch you as the rock and roll guy. So, you know, things kind of go full circle, like from the old days of the, the composite card in the, in the 70s and 80s, right. you were like holding a tennis racket. It hasn't got, gotten fully back to that, but it's like, you know, everything's online. So the more specifically you look like that type or that character, the more your, you know, chances of getting called in for that role. Um, so like, you know, I have a lot of people that come in and they need to shoot a doctor look or they- Does that mean they don't wear a doctor coat, do they? Or do they actually yeah, have scrubs, their agent asking for them? Literal yeah. scrubs and a, and a lab coat, wow. okay. you know, that kind of stuff. And there are certain agencies in town that really want those specific looks. I have certain agencies where doctor lab coat, they'll do the sports jersey, you know, with the baseball okay. cap. They wow. want a cheering fan doing this. Yeah. And those kind of, and that, again, that's, you know, sort of an extreme in the spectrum, but it does happen. And I think to, you know, to some degree, it's kind of a smart strategy in the digital era because, you know, when, let's face it, when someone sees a person in scrubs, right. kind of suggests, oh, they can play that role. Whereas, you know, otherwise you have to use your imagination. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think what's interesting, you know, is what I love about what you're saying, and I think most of us don't think about this, most actors don't think about this, is you've worked with clients from a lot of the same agents. So you actually have a sense of what an agent's taste might be when a client comes there. So there's this, in, this is an intelligence that you have, this knowledge that you have that the actor might not even realize by the time they come to sit across from you. Is there any, th so I would say most touch up now, I remember in the olden days when I was also first acting that we would like, you'd have like a, you'd go meet them and you'd go look at their portfolio and get on the phone with them beforehand and have a meeting beforehand. It was like about the feeling. And did you like that per It was like a whole like weird, uh, it was, to me, it felt unnecessary. It was like, I like their pictures. Can we just like shoot? Do we have to have a conversation? Yeah. Right. So 
Um, but I imagine that means a lot of actors are actually showing up for their shoot, having not had a lot of interaction with you. Do you find to that to be an advantage in some ways of you being able to be a little bit more of an outsider? Or do you find that it becomes like getting to know them as part of the process? How does that play into the work? I, I think that that depends on the photographer. I know there are photographers who still do that, who still consult with people ahead of time and want to talk to them. Um, for me personally, I'm, I've just found it easier to kind of meet them on the spot and, and go. Um, and that's just because, you know, there's, there's a lot of people at the end of the day need the same things. And as long as I can kind of make that person feel comfortable, feel at home, I'm giving them great lighting and backgrounds and things, you know, I, I know that we can get it. So, and I don't like for actors to get in their head and I don't want to get in my head as well, because I think that that's a recipe for disaster. Huh? Um, so, so I'm, I'm kind of more, you know, let's like sort of fly by the seat of our pants. Uh, is that the right way to say that? Yeah, yeah I think that sounds good. <laughs> um, and it also sounds like the flying by the seat of their pants is because you, there's a trust between, you know what you're doing, they know it. There's a great trust that I have in the way you talk about the actors. You're like, I'm going to really trust the actor to show up and act, to be an actor. And I'm going to really be the photographer and allow them to do their thing. And even if they're not prepared, like, you know, we have little tricks up our sleeve that's like, you know, squint your eyes this way and look into, you know what I mean? Where yeah. I cheated a little bit, um, yeah. you know, I mean, look, you get all types of people. I get people with lots of personality and I get people with zero charisma and you're just like, you got to work with it, you know? So. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm sure. And you have to have a great, end up with get some good photos. So, some other, so wait, just real quick. There are people who are coming in nurses costumes just so I'm clear that's a real thing. That's a, that's a very real, it's a real thing. thing. Okay, great. Um, and then and, when and you, for, you know, for clarification, generally the actor doesn't want to be doing it. Okay. Pleasing their agent or manager. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, so to take us back a little bit, cause I know we jumped right in. Tell us, can you help us? How did David Muller become a headshot photographer? You gave us a little bit of a history back there. Can you give us a little more how that happened? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I moved to LA in 2002 and I was pursuing uh, actor acting. So I, you know, I moved out here as an actor. I was doing a bit in New York. I did, you know, kind of a lot of commercial work and then uh, moved out here, was pursuing acting and things went pretty well. I was booking a couple commercials a year, did a few co-stars, you know, think things like that here and there. Um, and I actually had a girlfriend at the time who was like, you know, I'm not going to ever marry an out of work actor. So like you, you need to like get a job or whatever. So, uh, and she was an actress and she was working as a massage therapist. So I was like, all right, fair enough. And I had always had an interest in photography. I would try to like sort of read up on it, but not quite understand what I was reading or whatever. So I found an online course and uh, I studied, but I actually ended up studying with this guy. He was, he was in Hollywood. It was like, if you live in Hollywood, you come to the studio, which ended up being his studio apartment on Cherokee. And he okay. just sat there and chain smoked cigarettes while he taught me photography in his tiny little apartment. But he, he gave me enough of a foundation. Uh, and I, you know, I knew that I wanted to try headshots because I thought it would be a good you know, side sort of supplement to mm -hmm. the acting career. And so I did that for a while. I started shooting friends, start, started shooting friends of friends, and it just kind of slowly grew. And I was acting simultaneously uh, as well. And then I kind of finally hit a point where I was shooting enough that auditions were impossible for me to get to. You know, it's like when you're shooting every day, I can't, I don't know, just bail on a client and, you know, mm -hmm. run a callback or something. So, so I gave up uh, the audition side of it and, and stuck with photography. Yeah. And what, so what is, so FYI, your story is very similar to mine. I was coaching all the time and I was getting in a bad mood every time I had to go to an audition because I was like, but I have to be with a client. I don't want to go to an audition. I want to be with my clients. And that took over and I was like, oh, this is the passion that I love. So what's it like to have your own business, David? How does that, how's that feel? How do you like it? I do. I really do. I really love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and and you, I'm sure your business is at different sizes and ups and downs and pandemic and whatever. What are some of the, what are some of the things that you think like, I'll, I'll share for, I'll share for something from mine first to kind of help set this up. Right. So I didn't, I was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to be a coach. Right. And I was like, oh, I have to run a business at the same time. Wait, I thought I was just coaching. Oh, right. And then I suddenly started to like, actually like the business and understanding how much I could bring to the other creative people. Like this is actually, there's things you learn in being having a business that we can really apply to creativity. Is there anything that you've noticed just from having a business that you think makes you a better photographer? Well, I think just, you know, 
having a business, you're just kind of like dealing with life and real life issues and problems and taxes and, you know, just like, so it makes you a more sort of well-rounded person because you've just got all the, you know, you got these things that you have to deal with or your business is going to fall apart. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not enough to just be a good photographer. You know, I have to uh, service clients. I have to email them back in a, in a timely fashion. I have to have someone who's doing my scheduling who can answer, you know, intelligibly and, and, you know, serve the client and serve my needs as well. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but you know, you work hard enough at anything, it becomes a well-oiled machine and starts running on its own. Right. So yeah. I don't sure. know, did that answer? I don't know if I, it, got, it, got, it, it answers it. It also gives us, I think a little bit more of a glimpse. I think that a lot of times uh, an actor will sometimes think of a photo. I, I always find when I'm coaching an actor around getting their headshots, it's like we started earlier. It's got to be this look and this look and this look. And I always say, and also there's the part where you trust your photographer. Mm. And part of what, and I think this kind of imagining a photographer is not just a person who's taking the pictures, but also has a full scope on what it means to be creative in the world and make a living from being creative, like gets that about being an actor as well. And I think that that's a part where we're so quick for us to be like, I need to show up prepared, which means then they can snap the photos the right way, which actually is like show prepared and that magic that gets to come because they're an artist and you're gonna be an artist together. That magic kind of, uh, to me, by you sharing the full scope of having your business gives us a better sense of the fullness of what you do, I think. Um, so I also still wanna hear any other terrible, horrible things that actors should not do because we want to know those things. And wait, maybe another way to say this is, what's the great things that you love that actors do that they show up with that are really great ways? I mean, you've talked about some of them. Is there anything else that we want to not look over while we're talking today? Well, some of the great things, I mean, a lot of people come in with sort of printouts of uh, shots that have inspired them, whether they were taken by me or taken by someone else, uh, they, you know, to show the hair and makeup that they appreciate. And this is a little more for, for women. One of the most frustrating things about headshot photography through the years has been that, and I'm, I'm fortunate now because I shoot into the computer, I shoot tethered. So the clients literally see right. the shots as they're coming in. Um, and that allows us to address any concerns that they have right then and there. Prior to me doing that, I mean, for a lot of years, you know, I shot into the camera and you'd show them the back of the camera and it's that big and they're like, right okay, that looks good. And then, and then you get a, you know, an email or a call a couple of days later and they're like, I've just been looking at the pictures and I'm not happy with my hair and makeup. And it's like those, so like 99% of like people ever requesting reshoots, it was always hair and makeup related. And I'm always just like, you know, wanting to tear ah. your hair out. Cause I'm like, I, I did my job to the best that I could. Like I showed you what we were getting and you're just not happy. Or, and a lot of times it's people are afraid to speak up or whatever. So I forget. I forget. So that. what you're saying is now, now that you're shooting digitally and you're tethered, are you having a much better time of actors being able to say, Hey, I need to fix my hair. Like, has it become something that's easier to fix on set? Yeah. So I show them right in the computer. I literally bring them close. I'm like, look at it. Let us know, please speak up. Like we want you to speak up now, you know, don't hold your peace. The, wor the worst thing actors ever say to me, this should answer your question <laughs> is I trust you. And, and because they say, I trust you, what that means is, I don't care if I don't really like it, I trust you. And I go, no, 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 no. Like you're gonna go home and you're gonna live with this headshot for the next couple of years. So yeah. you have to be, you have to sign off and, and tell me that you like it. And if you don't like it, let's see what we can do now yeah. to adjust it. But the like, I trust you thing is like, it's great that you trust me, but you know if you like it or if you don't like it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, what I really like, David, there's like a through line for everything is like, I really want my actors, this is not the right word, but I want them to show up like adults. Like I want them to say what they want, the, the, be clear on what they want um, and I'm, then I'm going to be able to play with you. So you said something that kind of shocked me. It doesn't bother you when actors bring in like, here are some photos that kind of inspired me that I think I want to kind of look work towards. Does that not feel a little too much? Like, here's my expectation. Like, what's the line there for you? There's, there's definitely an element of that. There's always an element of me going, okay, well, you know, this person's super photogenic and you know you are maybe not as photogenic so are you expecting the same result or or you just enjoy and like the look and you're going for a similar look um so uh so you know 
it's good though because I understand what they have in their mind and it's like mm -hmm. you know if I see that they're showing me shots where the background's out of focus and it's darker then I'm not going to do you know a solid white background on them because I know okay this is what you're picturing so it's it's good to understand their expectations to some degree yeah. not that you're gonna you know necessarily meet it 100 percent but I can go in that direction with them uh, and, and understand my, my pet, one of my pet peeves though, is cause I do enjoy it when they bring in headshots. I hate when I had, I have guys bring in like editorial, like magazine covers of, if I see one more shot of Brad Pitt or Chris Pine in like a suit on, on cover of GQ like this, I'd be like, dude, that's a, just a different kind of shoot. <laughs> Stylist styled the crap out of that, that, <laughs> shoot you know that was a fifty thousand dollar camera you know what i mean it's just like not that it not that that all matters like right. i i could shoot that kind of stuff but it's like you know is it always I, guys who do that it feels like a guy thing when you say it that way yes it yeah it's more, <laughs> it's more the guys they bring in the gq photos and you know it's like okay. i've seen some of the same photos over and over really? and like, yeah and it's just like it's great shot but it's not it's, it's not a headshot it's an editorial type shot you know it's right. like I get that you want to look like a leading man. Uh, <laughs> I understand now. Yeah, so I have a question. There's a headshot that I've seen a lot that's come out more recently. And I don't know if you're noticing this where we're needing you to look like you have, like this is particularly, I think a harder headshot for um, femme identifying people. So that like it is, you have no makeup on and you're looking a little bit like your blue collar. You could be on the walking dead tomorrow. And, or you, you, you look like you have no makeup on and your hair looks like it's not done. And that picture feels like it's one of the hardest ones I've had people try to get from their photographers because it's usually about like looking your best on your best day, right? Have you had people come to you looking for that picture? And can you give some advice around that? Because that's the one that is the, the most difficult conversation that people have preparing for when I've talked to them about it. Do you know the shot I'm talking about? Yeah, well, I call it raw, right? Okay, so great, yeah. Really raw, like the girl wear pretty much no makeup mm -hmm. um, and, and they want to look like a victim they want to look domestically abused or, you know, that, that just that kind of, that kind of character, you know, yeah. like the character who, you know, the police showed up to the apartment and, you know, her yes. husband just got arrested and she's, and, and I think that that's a good, I think that's a good direction to go. I don't think that it's right for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that, you know, there are just people who they're going to book those types of roles because they have that emotional life. Uh, but if they have a glamorous headshot, they're most likely not going to get called in for it. Right. So yeah. And, and on my Instagram, sometimes I have, you know, shots where it's like a stack of four images and one of them will be like a very raw look. And I like to show that sort of, you know, disparity between the really glamorous, beautiful shot that they can get and the really sort of raw. And I, I purposely will adjust my lighting to sort of create more shadows uh, for that, that raw type of look. And again, so I, th I think it's something that's, good not necessarily for everyone right. uh you know but for for people who can who can pull that off i think is a good idea yeah and for me even i see it's almost runs a gamut from like ozark shameless victim on law and order like it's kind of like there's a continuum like shameless is like the cleaned up version of what this can look like at times right and right. like because they all look sexy and beautiful kind of and also we don't have a lot of money at the same time um <laughs> and is is there for when you have people coming in for that is there any piece of advice you would give them around like what to wear or because this just becomes for me this is the toughest conversation to have because there was i i'll tell you this is brian Pataka pet peeve you can be like brian you're crazy i'm david muller and i'm an amazing photographer and i take those photos all the time i am like can we try not to have a tank top in every photo ladies like i just have a thing about every woman being in the tank top because and, and i and because i feel like there's more to offer than just a tank top and i don't know why that's my little cross to bear but do you have other other ideas besides a tank top? And am I being a jerk for thinking that? No, I think that it's good to be specific. And I think a tank top isn't very specific. It can it can definitely like, you know, shameless is, I'm glad that you mentioned shameless because that tends to be the sort of show people reference when they say they want that raw look, you know, that's like, I would just want a ponytail like Fiona on shameless or whatever. And so uh, while a tank top can work, you know, I, I think that it can be more specific and do, you know, a sort of flannel type shirt or a denim, you know, these sort of like something that you would get your hands dirty or go to Home Depot in. 
Right. Uh, but then also like a little bit effortlessly sexy kind of thrown in. I think like there's always yeah. a little bit of effortlessly, which is why this is sometimes hard. It's like pull a lot of photos right. of what yeah. you've got. Look at Fiona on TV and see what she's wearing. And let's take from what she's got on, right? right. Yeah. Um, are there any uh, hallmarks that you always say to an actor when they say, hey, I'm booking, make sure you do X, Y, Z. Is there any of those kind of things you want to say before they come to show up other than preparation we've talked about so far? Um, well, definitely talking to your agent manager or anyone who has an interest in your photos, um, but not getting too many opinions. This, this is a pro like, I, sometimes I hate where it's like, my friend's a casting director and they said this, and I'm just like, in my mind, I'm going, yeah, that's, that's not true or that's <laughs> BS. So it's, you know, it's taking opinions to some degree with a grain of salt and understanding that everyone has a different opinion on what's going to work in a headshot and what's not going to work. And sometimes rules work and sometimes breaking rules works, you know? So again, it's sort of, it's sort of come in with what you want to do, but then sort of also let go. Got it. And what, and so this is, that's really helpful. A question for you, where's something where actors need to not waste their time when it comes to this kind of stuff? Sorry, ask that again. Yeah, sure. Is there a place where actors are wasting their time or putting too much energy in? Do you ever have someone show up and like, yeah, that's, you didn't need to do that. Like, is there that kind of stuff ever showing up? I think that, I think that actors who are, who don't have a huge resume necessarily, who are, you know, younger and newer, um, who don't necessarily, casting directors don't know you and you haven't worked a lot. Um, I think that it's important to understand that in the beginning of your career, I think you're going to book close to your type. And so not going too far out of the box thinking if I have all these different types of headshots, like, you know, if a leading man comes in and he's clearly a leading man, but he wants to do glasses and he wants to be goofy. And it's just like, you know, you're probably not going to play that. Like they're going to hire an actual goofy guy to play the goofy next door neighbor. You know what I mean? So like, don't waste your time thinking that if you just cover all the gamut of, of characters and types that you're going to be in better shape. I think that you should focus on the things that you, you actually have a quality towards that you're probably going to play. That's great. That's really great to say because I'm sure that there are actors who are like, is that going to be enough looks? Do I need eight looks? I mean, I'm sure that's like thing people worry over that all the time. So um, does your whole family ask you to take their picture all the time? <laughs> uh, not really. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm I mean, surprised. I've, I've done it. If anything, I, I say to them, like, I want to shoot you, you know, but. Uh, cool. Yeah. And so uh, anything else you want to leave us with before we call it a day here? Do you yeah, think we need to know? Hmm. I feel like we've covered everything. Yeah. Here's what I will say, just so everyone knows, is that David is like the most personable guy in the world. And I've been on set with him before. And when on set with you, it feels like the person you take them so seriously. Like I would say that you, what I mean by that is I think that a lot of times actors can feel like they are not validated because they're trying to go to jobs and like you go to many, many auditions where you don't get the job or you go to agent meetings where they don't offer you an representation. And so there are places where we find, actors may find themselves not feeling like someone is saying, yes, you should be doing what you're doing. And I think that when you shoot with David, you feel validated that you are spending your time doing the right thing while you're there. And that's a really, that's a unique character to spending time with David on a set. And so that's just evident from kind of the, what you told us today of like, what I love when you're like, yeah, don't waste your time doing that. You're not going to play the goofy guy that you really have an investment already when you see the person, like I already have ideas of where you're going to go and that you already are into their narrative. And I think that's a really, um, we look for that. We hope for that quality in a photographer that that's what they're going to, they're going to say to us and think about us. So I want to compliment you for that. Well, thank you very much. I, I try to make it easy. I was, like I said, I was an actor. I had, I had my headshots done. So I, I understand what it's like to go through it. And so, and I'm a, you know, by nature, I'm a little bit of a, a, a pleaser, a people pleaser. So I like to just, I like to make people happy. So when the leading guy comes in and wants to shoot glasses, I'll shoot glasses. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I'm going to do it for you. But, uh, right. You know, it's your time. You're paying me. And uh, so I'm at your service for that time. I love that. I love that. I love that willingness too. So David, thank you so much. Where's the best place for people that, I mean, you referenced your Instagram a few times. It sounds like it's probably the best place. Can you tell them where that is? Uh, sure. That's at David Muller photography and the website is David Um, and both are, both are great places to reach out to us. So you can send us a direct message or an email. Great. And David, how long are people waiting to shoot with you right now? Is it a long wait? Can we get in and see you? I know it's a weird time of year, so I'm just checking in. 
I'd have to check my scheduler. I'd say about a month. Okay, great. Good. So get on there, people. Let's make it happen. Um, David, thank yeah. you so much for just really shooting from the hip and being honest today. This really is helpful for all of us to hear this. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Brian. And uh, sure. thanks for all the work you're doing and informing actors and coaching. It's, uh, it's very necessary. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks.